Good evening, everybody. Our top stories tonight. Radical Dems desperately lashing out at the president, the FBI, of course, Judge Kavanaugh, and the Senate Judiciary Committee, as the FBI has found no corroborating witness nor evidence to support sexual abuse claims against the judge. And this, this is the seventh background investigation of the Supreme Court nominee. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says it's now time to move to a vote and to end the Democratic smear campaign and to confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. Is that what the Senate's going to be known for? Your nomination comes up here and we destroy your reputation. That's what the Senate is going to participate in. So above the partisan noise, beyond this shameful spectacle, which is an embarrassment to the Senate. What will endure are the actual facts. And the radical left surprising no one by refusing to, well, accept either facts or reality, continuing its campaign of protest, of threats, and personal destruction. We take up the Supreme Court fight tonight. Republican Congressman Louis Gohmert joins us, as does Ways and Means Committee Chairman Kevin Brady. Also tonight, new revelations about the link between the FBI surveillance of the Trump campaign and the Democratic National Committee's private law firm and its ties to Fusion GPS, the Clinton campaign, and the phony Trump dossier. This is a witch hunt. Uh, Republicans are seeing it. The Democrats know it's a witch hunt, too, but they don't want to admit it because that's not good politics for them. But it's a terrible witch hunt, and it's hurt our country. And now, the Trump White House calling out China for meddling in our midterm elections and the propaganda campaigns they're conducting in the United States. New reports detailing just how far China is going to spy on U.S. companies. We have the alarming details here tonight. As the Kavanaugh confirmation process has now moved into its final stages, a handful of key senators hold the key to his fate. And here, as best we can determine, is how they're likely to vote. As we just reported, North Dakota Democrat Heidi Heitkamp says she will vote no. It appears she is in so much trouble in her campaign for re-election that she has simply given up hope and apparently doesn't care much about what North Dakota voters are thinking, so much so that she's called off a debate that had been scheduled for tomorrow. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin appears positive, saying he's looking at Kavanaugh not as a high school or college kid, but as an adult and his years in professional and public service. Senator Manchin saying, quote, I am trying to put the human side to it. And Maine Republican Susan Collins appears positive. Collins says the investigation, she thinks, seems to be very thorough. And Arizona Republican Jeff Flake, who's played such a pivotal role in the past week, suddenly seeming more positive, saying today he sees, quote, no additional corroborating information in the FBI report. And Alaska Republican Lisa Murkowski's status unclear tonight. She's commented that she wants to read the full report, and she is apparently doing so this evening. President Trump warning that China is meddling in these midterm elections and has mounted propaganda campaigns inside the United States, uh, among other things, against his tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars in goods exported from China. Today, Vice President Pence spoke out against the Chinese intervention. Senior Chinese officials have also tried to influence business leaders to encourage them to condemn our trade actions leveraging their desire to maintain their operations in China. China threatened to deny a business license for a major U.S. corporation if they refused to speak out against our administration's policies. Beijing now requires American joint ventures that operate in China to establish what they call party organizations within their company, giving the Communist Party a voice and perhaps a veto in hiring and investment decisions. The Chinese Communist Party is rewarding or coercing American businesses, movie studios, universities, think tanks, scholars, journalists, and local, state, and federal officials. And worst of all, 
China has initiated an unprecedented effort to influence American public opinion. The 2018 elections and the environment leading into the 2020 presidential elections. To put it bluntly, President Trump's leadership is working, and China wants a different American president. The vice president also noted China has persuaded three Latin American countries, El Salvador, the Dominican Republic, Panama, to end their relationship with Taiwan in favor, of course, communist China. Pence's address comes as Bloomberg Businessweek is reporting the communist China regime is behind a major espionage effort seeking to infiltrate major U.S. companies, including Amazon and Apple. The report is based on an ongoing three-year probe by federal investigators into Supermicro, one of the world's largest suppliers of server motherboards, Investigators discovering that operatives from the People's Liberation Army have inserted tiny microchips into server hardware during the manufacturing process in factories in China. That's just some of the findings of the investigators. Chips contained memory, networking capability, and processing power for an attack. Nearly 30 companies were targeted, nearly 7,000 super micro servers are in Apple's network uh, that before the company discovered the uh, added chips. Joining us tonight, a man who's very in tune with the economic issues uh, in uh, uh, every hemisphere, Congressman Louis Gohmert. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee, the Republican Study Committee, the House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, it is great as always to see you. The Pence China uh, speech. Uh, I, I, th I happen to think uh, is extraordinarily important, and for most Americans, it seems to me revelatory. What do you think? I think you're exactly right, and uh, it's been amazing to me to hear some of the uh, uh, pseudo-media, the alt-left media, sometimes people call it the mainstream, it's alt-left, but, <laughs> uh, but they've been demeaning Vice President Pence for a good speech and an important speech and sending a message to the Chinese. And, and don't forget, Lou, that it's not only the trade, but it's also what uh, Vice President was pointing out uh, it was the Chinese that we know is, is uh, I thought it would be the blockbuster report after I questioned Peter Strzok about it, mm -hmm. but they hacked uh, Hillary Clinton's private server. They were getting every email, and it wasn't Russia, it was China, and they were getting every email that she sent or received through her private server. These are people that have not treated us fairly. They've been the worst abuser of patents and copyrights. And uh, you, whatever direction you want to go, human rights, uh, there's problems there, but especially on trade. And Marsha Blackburn and I met with uh, uh, one of their copyright people, and we finally talked to an honest one. He said, yeah, we've got a real problem with enforcing uh, U.S. copyrights. Uh, we did seize, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of goods. What would you do with them? Well, the government sells them. Uh, when they see some from the black market. But anyway, it's outrageous what's going on, and I am thrilled that uh, President Trump and Mike Pence are calling things the way they are, which Obama never, ever would do. Uh, he, he would not, and by the way, he was not alone, neither would uh, George W. Bush, neither would no, really? uh, yeah. uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, this and is look, a different look president, what's happened a to different China, kind right? of president, and right. he means business, and when he takes yep. on an issue... He's usually the first person to, to talk about it straightforwardly and move to action. Uh, isn't that refreshing, though? I mean, I'm sorry? Isn't that refreshing? I, I find it quite refreshing. Oh, I think, I think the entire country finds it uh, refreshing with a few well, marginal uh, that, hmm. uh, desperate dims. We'll leave it at that. There you go. Uh, let, let's turn to uh, the developments uh, today in, in Washington. Uh, the uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, in the minds of most people we've heard today, think that he will be confirmed, but by a very narrow margin. Uh, you're thinking? Well, I, I think you could substitute for the vote up or down on Kavanaugh, uh, just to substitute the question, have you any decency 
And if you vote yes, then yes, you do. And if you vote no on Kavanaugh, then the answer is no. I, I just can't imagine anybody treating a respected... Uh, it, it, they didn't treat anybody like this. Not Ginsburg, Sotomayor. There were all kinds of places to go, but they treated them with respect mm -hmm. despite the political differences, and now it is destroy anybody with whom you disagree. It, this is where we've gone, and frankly, right. Lou, it's been pretty successful for them, and so right. naturally they're going to be here. You, when you say we've gone, I, I, I truly don't believe it's we. Not no, yet. it isn't. Well, you're it's, right. You're it's right. the left. It's not. It's the Democrats it is the left. Uh, who are radicalized. Right. The most uh, a recent survey showing uh, half of uh, millennial Democrats believe in either democratic socialism or uh, or socialism right. itself. I, this uh, this is a generation going in a different direction. Uh, the yep. young man who was arrested uh, in uh, Sheila Jackson Lee's office for doxing uh, U.S. senators, and we now yep. learn today threatening to release health data of some children of U.S. senators. I mean, this it's unbelievable. Is... They know no bounds when it comes to decency. Well, and, are we going you know, to prosecute? It... Are we going to prosecute yeah. when they do this? Because this so. has got to. I hope so. It's got to end, and it's got to end here, or it's going to go to places we can't. We got to have some major changes in the FBI, or they're not going to. I mean, they lied to Jeff Sessions about uh, the uh, the the Pakistani. Oh well, was, I mean, they played the uh, whole I mean, Justice Department the, for to, fools. Yeah, uh, and by the so, way. I, it appears that way, but let's not forget, the Democratic Party has been politically corrupt now for, uh, what, 20 years, and at the same time, uh, their, their connections to the Democratic uh, yeah. Party and the Democratic National Committee uh, are, and Democratic administrations uh, are documented and will, will be more so before well we're through. Well, they might as well raise their forearm and raise their their hands and yell, Heil Soros is the way they're headed. But uh, there are enough Americans that say we need decency, we need to follow the Constitution, and they, we need to, dis to stop this destructive policy that they've been on. Right. But it, look at Kavanaugh. Right. People criticizing for how he reacted when when people oh, are well, saying you know, you and I both know that is oh that, that's theatrics. That's yeah. uh, pure. If he had come in and said, I'm not guilty, I didn't do any of this and no emotion, then they would have been after him that he didn't have any emotion. Yeah. So he wasn't going to win either way. It's it's the power they, of personal they weren't there. destruction. <laughs> They weren't there to interview the man for a job. They were there to destroy no, him and his exactly family. Right. Congressman Lloyd Gomer, as always, great to have you Lou, with us. We appreciate you. Good you, to see you're you. You're cutting to the chase here. It's great. We do try, don't Thank we? Thank you. Up yes. next, the Radical Dems moving the goalposts, once again complaining about the FBI's seventh, seventh background investigation of Judge Kavanaugh. We take that up and much more. Congressman Kevin Brady, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, joins us here next. Breaking news tonight. It may have major implications for the uh, confirmation uh, of Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Republican Senator Steve Daines of Montana says he will not be available Saturday at any point to vote on the Kavanaugh confirmation, who he strongly supports, because he's walking his daughter down the aisle. Daines' office says he will not miss the wedding. His status Sunday is unclear. So is the prospect for Judge Kavanaugh with his absence. We're also awaiting the arrival of President Trump in Rochester, Minnesota. Thousands of people are streaming right now into the arena that you see there, uh, 5,200 uh, seat uh, capacity. Uh, uh, the mayor uh, civic center where the president will be uh, giving his uh, address. He will also be marking his third political rally this week standing alongside a Republican woman uh, seeking the U.S. Senate, this time aimed at lifting Karen Housley over Dem Senator Tina Smith. President Trump also expected to support Republican Jim Hagedorn's congressional bid. And tonight, more evidence, uh, and we'll be covering that uh, rally uh, throughout and bring whatever is happening to you. More evidence of political bias in Silicon Valley. A new report uh, by GovPredict 
finds the overwhelming majority of Apple employees' political contributions go to Democrats. I don't think you're probably surprised. From 2014 through 2018, 91 percent of all donations went to Democrats. Over 1.8 million went to Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. The Republican who received the most donations, top rhino, Paul Ryan, living large in Silicon Valley. Tonight, Congressman Kevin Brady. He Joining us tonight, Congressman Kevin Brady. He is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. And I always say the uh, powerful Ways and Means Committee because that it is. Mr. Chairman, good to have you with us. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, what is happening right now in trade. Uh, this president is moving. Uh, it's just extraordinary what he has done, moving Canada and Mexico into line, he and the European Union. Uh, the man is accomplishing more on trade than most of us thought possible. Yeah, no, Lou, no doubt. This is really big news on all those fronts that you mentioned. I think uh, having a modern 21st century agreement between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico can really be a big win for American workers because it's a level playing field right. for our local businesses and our farmers as well. So uh, we're, uh, and, I, and I've been looking closely at it. We just got a uh, late Sunday night. So everyone's just digging into it, as you'd imagine. Uh, but, boy, there looks like some really mm -hmm. solid, solid economic wins. The president made it clear from day one he wanted a modern agreement that, that drove right. jobs uh, to the United States, uh, raised paychecks here in America, uh, and uh, beyond just buying America, we wanted to sell America as well to Canada and Mexico. And so uh, the focus, as you know, has right. been on uh, more jobs here in the United States, and every one of these provisions seems to point right. that direction. Well, it looks like you're, you're winning and winning some more. Let's turn to winning and the politics of winning. Uh, right now, uh, it, is it your sense that Judge Kavanaugh will be confirmed or not? Uh, I, I believe he will. Uh, I'm not in the Senate. I know it comes down to a couple of votes there, but, boy, what a qualified jurist and uh, he, he belongs on that Supreme Court and, frankly, think... will be a fair constitutionalist. Uh, I'm just sick by what he and his family have had to endure in this process. But I think at the end of the day, uh, he'll be on the bench where, frankly, he's, he deserves to be. Uh, where he deserves to be and uh, where does the Republican conference deserve to be come November 7th? Uh, the day after the election, will there be as uh, many Republicans uh, as there are now? It would be difficult to be at uh, almost this record level we've been at. Mm -hmm. So we expect to lose some seats. And, but I'll tell you this, uh, I predict the Republicans will hold the House. Uh, we have amazing candidates who reflect the values of their district. They're, they're fighting it hard. And frankly, look, these are the people who've delivered, you know, a dramatically new economy for families and businesses that have rebuilt the military for the first time in 15 years and really getting red tape off the backs of our local job creators and, and with the Senate Are, putting in place really that fair, objective uh, uh, judges that I think uh, all Americans wanted. And so, boy, we've got a record to run on the Democrats. It's a terrific nothing record. Other than Are they you running? just don't like this president. Is your conference running uh, in full support of the president of the United States? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Then I, then I'll I tell think you, I can only speak for the House. Your projection but... is probably going to be uh, very accurate. It's what concerns me is when yeah. I hear a number of people try to separate and to walk a walk a fence, if you know what I mean, uh, instead of support the president. Well, I think members represent their districts, and sometimes you'll have disagreements with this president. Mm -hmm. You do all of them, but I say in the House, what we've seen are members who've gone all in on tax reform, all in on rebuilding the military, border security, all these key economic issues. And so at the end of the day, well, I'm just, I'm just uh, I think expect that we're going to surprise some pundits. Well, uh, these pundits have got quite a record under President Trump, so surprise away, Congressman. It's always great to see you. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Congressman Kevin Brady. Thank you, Lou. Up next, Senator Lindsey Graham booed by the radical left because he defended Judge Kavanaugh. But he had, I think, a perfect response. I'm the first person to say, I want to hear from Dr. Ford. I thought she was handled 
respectfully. I thought Kavanaugh was treated like crap. Yeah, well, boo yourself. Boo yourself. We'll have a lot more right after the break on the left's despicable conduct. Tucker Carlson joins us here tonight. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In a letter released last night, an ex-boyfriend of Christine Blasey Ford contradicted a number of things she testified to last week as being true. Among his claims are Ford helped a friend prepare for a polygraph exam, explaining in detail what to expect and how polygraphs work. He claimed Ford never indicated a fear of flying, that the two had traveled around Hawaii in a propeller plane. He also claimed that Ford never expressed a fear of closed quarters or tight spaces. Citing these claims, Senate Judiciary Committee Chair Chuck Grassley called on Ford's legal counsel to please, pretty please, turn over the evidence referenced in her testimony and that they have yet to provide to the Senate. Grassley wrote this in part, quote, your continued withholding of material evidence despite multiple requests is unacceptable as the Senate exercises its constitutional responsibility of advice and consent for a judicial nomination. The testimony hinges on evidence to which Dr. Ford has repeatedly referred, some of which has already been provided to a nationally circulated newspaper, but which you have refused to provide to the august U.S. Senate. I added a couple of words there. Joining us tonight, I am pleased to tell you, is Tucker Carlson, the host of, I like the name of the show, Tucker Carlson tonight, <laughs> and author of the brand new book, Ship of Fools, where is that? There we go. I knew we could catch up. It is now available everywhere. We recommend it to you highly. Uh, great to see you. And congratulations on the book. Thank you very much. And as you, well, you, you, you examine uh, with a razor uh, sharp uh, knife uh, the, the corpus of the body politic, uh, I, the elites don't come out too well in either party. Uh, no. And, and I, I'm kind of stunned to think that you were not just a blind a partisan pursuing the uh partisan the i've been in dc for 35 <laughs> years i have plenty of contempt to go around but what shocks look trump gets elected he gets elected despite everyone's predictions he gets yep. elected because the country is mad about major decisions washington has made this happens i get it amazing most amazing to me is that nobody in washington pauses and says wait a second did I do something wrong that the country's mad at me? Yeah. Can I learn from this? Can I improve my behavior going forward? No, it's Russia. Trump's a racist. Okay, fine. But pick, were pick you one. part of this? Like the decisions you made about the economy, the culture, foreign policy. People hated those decisions, and you've never owned up to you know, that. The, the damn fools of the Dems yes. actually don't understand that Trump is neither uh, right nor left. This is a man who exactly. came from the center. Exactly. He thinks pragmatically he acts pragmatically he is pursuing the national interest he is first and foremost an american yes and he is governing whether anyone on the left wants to admit this because it's inconvenient to their own interest he is governing from the center of this country exactly with great traditional values in the in, in his in his sights it is just uh, it's not one of the things i'm kidding yeah. about your show uh, you, you as well as your show which I love, because you put on the line every night a contest uh, of wits, uh, yours and the, well, half-wits of the left, uh, who have the courage or the foolishness to, <laughs> to show up to engage. I want to debate it. Look, I, want, I, I believe I am liberal in the truest sense. I think we should talk about things. That's what's amazing about Trump. He comes out, he's like, you know, people kind of want us to defend our own borders. Okay. Wow, what a Nobody wants to concept. have that debate. Yeah. Shut up, racist. That's when you know they're lying when they call you names. And the most recent, by the way, I love part of the debate because there's so little of the debate from the left that is honest. Yes. Uh, and when now we find out, you know, we've been talking about 11 million illegal immigrants in this country about yeah. 20 years. MIT, Harvard, and the folks, they did a study and figured out it could be 30 million. Yeah. Uh, novel idea. At least 22, they <laughs> There's an impact. It's unbelievable. It's just... Uh, let, let's take a look at one of my favorite moments because Tucker and I have worked together for 100 years. Well, at least few decades, and uh, at uh, another network. And I just want to, I'd like you to see a, a conversation uh, between uh, Brian uh, Stelter and, uh, uh, and, and I, I mean, I just can't imagine this, Ted Koppel over there. But there it is. They had a talk. 
CNN didn't like the way it came out. No. That if ratings means, are up, that means what? That Oh, the ratings are up, it means you can't do without Donald Trump. You would be lost without Donald Trump. Well, that is what he says. Ted, you know that's not true. CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald Trump. <laughs> Well, they're in the toilet with him, too, but they would be deeper in the tunnel, in the, in the toilet. And why not just admit it? I mean, that kid is supposed to be the media critic. He's supposed to be, in effect, the on-air ethicist at the channel. And he's telling a lie so stupid that the audience laughs at him for telling it. It's totally, look, their ratings are up because of Trump. I'm not sure there's anything shameful about that. I was on a I worked at CNN when impeachment happened. The ratings are up for impeachment. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. The fact that he lies about it, and virtually everything, by the way, and expects us to believe it, tells you everything about the dumbness of the ruling class, I think. And by the way, I, I don't know if you happen to see it, a, a terrific piece. Uh, Ted Koppel and uh, our old boss and friend, uh, Ted Turner. Yes. Uh, it was a, a moving, uh, sad uh, talk, uh, as Ted Koppel said, uh, two old geezers sitting out in Montana yeah. uh, looking into the sun. Uh, and the sunset, uh, it seems. It was a, a touching moment and nice to see. Whatever you think of Ted Turner's politics, he was a, a smart guy, a visionary guy, and I don't think he would have put up with this crime. He would have said to that kid, who are you exactly? Why are you lying so obviously? Leave. Yeah, Ted wouldn't have put up with that. No. Too long. But although I have to say he put up with a lot. But <laughs> he did. I, I, I saw it firsthand. <laughs> anyway, Tucker, we are delighted to have you with us on the show. Thanks a million. Does, does uh, Kavanaugh get confirmed in your view? I think he has to. I think I think Republicans understand their voters like Kavanaugh much more than they like them. You better get this guy confirmed. Perfectly said. Up next, President Trump takes on the lying left wing media. The president passionately defending Brett Kavanaugh. All of that and more with Judge Janine Pirro. When we come back, please don't go anywhere else. Joining us now, Judge Janine Pirro, the host of Justice with Judge Janine and author of the New York Times bestseller, 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 Liars, Leakers and Liberals, the case against the anti-Trump conspiracy. Did I mention it's a bestseller and a great, great Book it is. Buy it right away if you haven't already. Thank you. Great to see you. Great to be seen. I am so... <laughs> <laughs> well, like that one. I, I have nothing to say. But, okay. But, uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, this is the damnedest time in, in my lifetime where we are sitting here looking at a president who's done everything he can for this country mm -hmm. and who is un, in unprecedented terms successful. For the country, for all Americans, minorities, yep. you name it, the military is being rebuilt. Everything is going as good as anyone could possibly have hoped or prayed. And here the left-wing media is tearing him to pieces. The deep state is cutting him, uh, trying to cut his heart out. And the damn left is just re unrelenting. They're, I just can't stand it. They're unrelenting, Lou, and I, it, I'm glad that you feel the same way that I do. And, and sometimes I exhaust myself with my exasperation with all of this. But the thing that is just, it, look, I, I ran for office five times. I get politics. I don't get this kind of politics because the guy has done everything right. You're absolutely right. What is shocking to me and goes right to my core is this whole concept that the defendant is presumed guilty, that the burden of proof is on the accused. He's too accomplished. He's too smart. He is too much the epitome of the American dream, American exceptionalism, uh, number one in his class at Yale, an extraordinary young man. But we have to and destroy this... him. And if you don't destroy well, the him, then you don't write. Well, that's their philosophy. That's what I was saying. That's their theory of justice, that the presumption of innocence is on the, or, or uh, guilt is on the part of the defendant. I mean, you, we cannot do that. But what they're doing is they're changing the whole paradigm. And this is a very dangerous time. It's a very, you know, uh, it, it, it's just, it's confounding. You can't figure out where these people are coming from. But this is from the rules of our radicals. This is about creating havoc. This is about turning the Constitution yeah. upside down. And it's every woman, for them to say, if you don't believe this uh, the, uh, Kat, uh, Catherine Ford or whatever her name is, uh, Blasey, then you probably hate women. This is backwards. It is backwards, but the entire left-wing ideology is perverse, and it is a sham. 
Uh, they are trying to uh, create a socialist state that, uh, I mean, if you really like socialism, check out uh, Europe, uh, check out Venezuela. Uh, as the president has pointed out, there is no contest here intellectually. And the only reason that the, that the Democrats have uh, any, any base whatsoever is a constituency of grievance, of group and identity politics that frankly does not add up to, a, a, to an idea, to a philosophy, and, and to an ideology in this country. We are Americans, we are a melting pot, and we produce Americans who create and sustain and benefit from the American dream. But it's that simple. It is that simple. But I think that in every scenario uh, that you can lay out, there's also there's always going to be some kind of confrontational, some kind of pushback. And now we are seeing, for the first time in our history, socialists getting elected at the local level. Hell, Bernie Sanders was almost a candidate for president. Yeah. He was a socialist. So you've got yeah, but the But he's George something so of a poodle. I mean, he was more of a... Uh, I, I don't know, sort of a mascot you know for the radical Don't Dems. insult my poodles, okay? I, well, you say you know, he's something of a poodle. I love my poodles. I know I'm you do. Two standard I, poodles. Just as okay. you do not want one person to be a, 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 an avatar for an entire gender, exactly. I do not want my uh, disparaging remarks of Bernie Sanders and his hollow acceptance of being ripped uh, off uh, by the. Uh, Clintons uh, in the Democratic nomination to be in any way considered an offense against your poodles or anyone else. Well, thank you very much. In the end, my concern is for our system of justice, the Constitution, our system of justice. The my sense concern that is for the soul of this country. My concern is that we have a media that accepts this kind of nonsense. They know everything there Why? Who is a they? lie. Who are they? Lou, you tell me. You're smart. Who are they? Why do they buy it? Why do they tell us it's a lie? Who are these people? The national left-wing media? Yeah, who are they? Well, first of all, no one talks about their corporate masters. They don't talk about AT&T when they talk about fake news. They don't talk about Comcast when they talk about... Yeah, about you can't. <laughs> NBC News, yep. MSNBC. They don't talk about CBS. They don't talk about the Redstone family and the owners at National Entertainment. This is corporatism gone mad. They are unleashing the hounds of hell in the form of so-called former journalists who are now running nothing but propaganda operations. And in this case, against this president, the Republican Party, conservatives, traditional Americans, they're trying to destroy our middle class, working men and women, minorities who are benefiting from the Trump economy. It doesn't stop with the fools who run those enterprises that we call media companies, it doesn't stop there. It goes to the CEOs and the boards of those companies that own them. Well, I think that also what, what you have here are people, minorities, who absolutely believe in Donald Trump. But they're selling a tale that they can't. Here's well, my concern. We better get people registered to vote, new voters, because this look, is where the they're going to do it. If the Republicans don't have the sense to have a ground operation, to have a digital operation that pushes this president, pushes the Republican Party and American ideals now with this, this outrage that is the Kavanaugh confirmation yep. that is uh, being attacked by the radical left, then they don't deserve power. Great <sighs> to see you as always. Oh, great to see you. Can't, can't wait Very to... exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a calm conversation between the judge and old Lou, right? Yeah, it's good right. to see you, Lou. Great to see you, Janine. Thanks. Be sure to watch. Just joining us now, Judge Janine Pirro, the host of Justice with Judge Janine, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 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 Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. Did I mention it's a bestseller and a great, great book it is. Buy it right away if you haven't already. Great to see you. Great to be seen. I am so... <laughs> well, <laughs> like that one. I, I have nothing to say. But, okay. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, this is the damnedest time in, in my lifetime where we are sitting here looking at a president who's done everything he can for this country mm -hmm. and who is un, in unprecedented terms successful for the country, for all Americans, minorities, yep. you name it, the military's being rebuilt, 
everything is going as good as anyone could possibly have hoped or prayed. And here the left-wing media is tearing him to pieces. The deep state is cutting him, uh, trying to cut his heart out. And the damn left is just unrelenting. They're, I just can't stand it. They're unrelenting, Lou. And it, it, I'm glad that you feel the same way that I do. And, and sometimes I exhaust myself with my exasperation with all of this. But the thing that is just, it, look, I, I ran for office five times. I get politics. I don't get this kind of politics because the guy has done everything right. You're absolutely right. What is shocking to me and goes right to my core is this whole concept that the defendant is presumed guilty, that the burden of proof is on the accused. He's too accomplished. He's too smart. He is too much the epitome of the American dream, American exceptionalism, uh, number one in his class at Yale, an extraordinary young man. But we have to and destroy this... him. And if you don't destroy well, the him, then you don't. Destroy. Right. Well, that's their philosophy. That's what I was saying. That's their theory of justice, that the presumption of innocence is on the, or, or uh, guilt is on the part of the defendant. I mean, you, we cannot do that. But what they're doing is they're changing the whole paradigm. And this is a very dangerous time. It's a very, you know, uh, it, it, it's just it's confounding. You can't figure out where these people are coming from. But this is from the rules of our radicals. This is about creating havoc. This is about turning the Constitution yeah. upside down. And it's every woman, for them to say, if you don't believe this uh, the, uh, Kat, uh, Catherine Ford or whatever her name is, uh, Blasey, then you probably hate women. This is backwards. It is backwards, but the entire left-wing ideology is perverse, and it is a sham. Uh, they are trying to uh, create a socialist state that, uh, I mean, if you really like socialism, check out uh, Europe, uh, check out Venezuela, uh, as the president has pointed out. There is no contest here intellectually. And the only reason that the, that the Democrats have uh, any, any base whatsoever is a constituency of grievance, of group and identity politics that frankly does not add up to a, a to an idea, to a philosophy, and, and to an ideology in this country. We are Americans. We are a melting pot, and we produce Americans who create and sustain and benefit from the American dream. But it's that simple. It is that simple. But I think that in every scenario uh, that you can lay out, there's also there's always going to be some kind of confrontational, some kind of pushback. And now we are seeing, for the first time in our history, socialists getting elected at the local level. Hell, Bernie Sanders was almost a candidate for president. Yeah. He was a socialist. So you've got yeah, but the he's George something so of a poodle. I mean, he was more of a... Uh, I, I don't know, sort of a mascot you know for the radical Dems. You know what? Don't insult Dems. my poodles, okay? I, well, when you say you know, he's something of a poodle. I love my poodles. I know I'm you do. Two standard I, poodles. Just as okay. you do not want one person to be a, 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 an avatar for an entire gender, exactly. I do not want my uh, disparaging remarks of Bernie Sanders and his hollow acceptance of being ripped uh, off uh, by the. Uh, Clintons uh, in the Democratic nomination to be in any way considered an offense against your poodles or anyone else. Well, thank you very much. In the end, my concern is for our system of justice, the Constitution, our system of justice. The my sense concern that is for the soul of this country. My concern is that we have a media that accepts this kind of nonsense. They know everything there Why? Who is a are lie. They? Who are they? Lou, you tell me. You're smart. Who are they? Why do they buy it? Why do they tell us it's a lie? Who are these people? The national left-wing media? Yeah, who are they? Well, first of all, no one talks about their corporate masters. They don't talk about AT&T when they talk about fake news. They don't talk about Comcast when they talk about... Yeah, about you can't. <laughs> NBC News, yeah. MSNBC. They don't talk about CBS. They don't talk about the Redstone family and the owners of national entertainment. This is corporatism gone mad. They are unleashing the hounds of hell in the form of so-called former journalists who are now running nothing but propaganda operations. And in this case, against this president, the Republican Party, conservatives, traditional Americans, they're trying to destroy our middle class, working men and women, minorities who are benefiting from the Trump economy. It doesn't stop with 
the fools who run those enterprises that we call media companies. It doesn't stop there. It goes to the CEOs and the boards of those companies that own them. Well, I think that also what, what you have here are people, minorities, who absolutely believe in Donald Trump. But they're selling a tale that they can't. Here's well, my concern. We better get people registered to vote, new voters, because this look, is where the they're going to do it. If the Republicans don't have the sense to have a ground operation, to have a digital operation that pushes this president, pushes the Republican Party and American ideals now with this, this outrage that is the Kavanaugh confirmation yep. that is uh, being attacked by the radical left, then they don't deserve power. Great <sighs> to see you, as always. Oh, great to see you. Can't, can't wait Very to... Very exercise. <laughs> Nothing like a calm conversation between the judge and old Lou, right? Yeah, it's good right. to see you, Lou. Great to see you, Janine. Thanks. Be sure to watch Just Former President Barack Obama putting his name behind, are you ready? 260 radical Dems in the midterms. His extensive list includes self described socialist Alexandria Ocasio Cortez in New York, Andrew Gillum in Florida. A reminder in his eight years as president, Obama presided over the Democratic Party loss of 63 seats in the House, 10 in the Senate, as well as the loss of 12 governorships, losing more than 1,000 thousand Democratic uh, Democrats uh, in uh, his mere eight years in office.